Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Crispy, thanks for being here. Like I said, man, can you break it down? There's a few people out there that might not know about you. Some people do know about you. Can you just give us a little rundown of uh, exactly who you are? Yeah, man. Um, so I, I was in the Army from 2004 to 2010. Uh, I retired in 2010 after being severely wounded in Iraq. Uh, my vehicle ran over an IED. And uh, as a result of it, I sustained 75% burns to the body, third and fourth degree burns, mm -hmm. and had my right foot uh, partially amputated. And after nine years of um, limp salvage, we found cancer in it, so I ended up amputating below the knee. And uh, that's pretty much uh, where the uh, where the name Crispy came from, from the burns and, and um, you know, making fun of the of, of the situation and making light of the situation. Mm -hmm. That's what I should say. It was one of those things where like, man, you can either let it contain you and get a hold of you or you can just like move forward with it, make fun of it and, and, and use it as a tool instead of a crutch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's so many things that I found this interesting about your story when I was, uh, you know, researching and stuff like that. We've met each other. I think we met most recently at SHOT Show. The last gun I, show was ever. <laughs> was it or was it the NRA? Was it? Four. Oh, last year? I think so. Wow, was it that long ago? Was it, I, yeah, I think I met you at the, at the uh, is it Architect booth? Okay. Yes. Yes. We met at Accutech last year, and then I think we bumped into a get to each other again at Shot Show probably this year. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I mean everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know you. Yeah. You probably meet a, a ton of people. When I was looking this up, man, the the IUD. This is what I saw. You can like confirm this or not. The IUD was two hundred pounds. Yeah, it was a two hundred pound IUD. Um, oh, it was crap. actually they actually dug it. Uh, they dug it on the ground. They buried it, and so. What? There was a guy that had a command detonation that was in a building, pretty much just waiting for us to roll by to pull the trigger. Wow, is is that uh, is that individual still uh, above ground? Do you know? <laughs> he is below ground uh, after I was uh, sent out of uh, Iraq. Um, my team went and did a uh, uh, knock on and search, as you can say, and the individual happened to fall on top of a. Uh, Five five six round. Okay, all right. <laughs> cool. yeah. Good, good little, to hear. Nice little convenient uh, accident there. <laughs> Accidents happen. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. yeah, it's so it's so um I don't know it's so crazy. So you not only did this um did this thing go off? I think the uh, from what I was reading the vehicle you guys were in. What kind of vehicle were you in? It was a Humvee. It was eleven fifty one. Okay, so this went up in the air. I'm assuming. Yep. Okay. And then, from what I read, it crashed back down. Were you thrown from the vehicle? Um, no, I was actually, like, I fell back inside because I was a gunner. So, mm -hmm. when the vehicle hit, my legs buckled and I fell um, to the passenger side, uh, to the back passenger side, which where Specialist Harky was at. And, um, you know, when I fell on his laps, the IED had hit right behind him and he mm -hmm. was he was KIA, killed in action, yeah. uh, insustainable. Yeah. That's tough. And then so and then from what I read, you were you were somehow like returning fire while the, the... I did. So when it, okay. yeah, when it initially happened, um, I was I was returning fire. I got back up on my gun and started shooting back. There was enemy all around us. Um, so it was one of those things where I knew if I didn't get up and and give support by fire, uh, everybody else in the vehicle was going to die. Yeah, and got... now all the other guys around us were going to die. Right. And, and the, the vehicle was on fire itself. I was yes. Wow, yeah, Hot. yeah. You, oh, you're a badass, man. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> I've met some uh, badass was, dudes doing this thing, but was, you are pretty badass. I was just doing my job. Mhm. Mm yeah, that's um. So there's lots of people out here thanking you for your service. Um, you know, I, I, I I'd like to uh, join those guys out there. Is it? I know you probably have to talk about this stuff a lot, man. Is it difficult to talk about it? Is it? gotten easier from having to you know relive this over and over again with when you when you meet folks like us no not at all so that was one of the biggest things that i did after i was wounded you know i shared my story a few times 
with a, a bunch of close friends and uh, I noticed the impact that I was making and I I noticed that me telling the story was keeping my brother's uh, memories alive. <clears throat> so I, I took some classes, I went to a couple of schools and, and really took it on to become a, a motivational speaker. So I started touring the country and I've done motivational speeches in high school, colleges. I've done some for professional football teams professional basketball, baseball, I mean, you name it, I, I've been around the country and, uh, you know, been able to get out there and tell my story um, to a lot of individuals out there. And then and it's helped me, you know, it, it gets a little easier every single time. <clears throat> but like I said, most importantly, it allows me to share the story of my brothers and and, and allows me to, to plant their name in people's heads because when they're done and when they leave that, that seminar, they're, they're going to remember Harkey, they're going to remember Sergeant Campos, you know, they're going to remember all those guys that stepped up in a time when um, there was chaos, people were dying, and, and it was just a hard time. People stepped up and, and did their jobs and performed to a level that um, I think a lot more people that have never been in that situation would have buckled and would have given up. So mm -hmm. um, it, it's not hard. It, it's part of me. Um, I love sharing my story. I love talking about everybody that was involved that day and, and ultimately you know i just think that the story needs to be told as, as much as i can to uh, as many new people as i meet mm -hmm. yeah it's um man this like uh, have they made a movie of this yet or have you written the books <laughs> or the movie rights been because uh, it's amazing when i when i look at all the details of this yeah no we're actually in the process of working on a book i've put it off for so long and um you know, it's just it's just one of those things, man. I didn't. <clears throat> I wanted to come at this different. I didn't want it to be another another book that that is. Oh, I I joined the service after nine eleven, and you know, I became this person and went and did this and did that and killed all these people and blah 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 blah. And, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's all cool, I guess. I, I I mean, I'm not knocking anybody else's service, but I wanted to do it different. I wanted to be um, a book where people could see the beginning when I got wounded, the struggle, and then afterwards, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and I don't want people to always define me as just a wounded soldier, you know. I, I got more on my resume under that. You know, I, got, I currently hold a lot of world records uh, for powerlifting and, mm -hmm. and, I, you know, for, for just a bunch of different things that are outside of the military. So that's kind of what we're going to focus on. We're going to touch on that and, and touch on the, on the people that I've met along the way. You know, from burn kits to burn firefighters to um, just a bunch of different people out there that I've met that I can relate to. And, you know, just friendships that I've developed over the years from, you know, from like I'm not name dropping or anything, but like, you know, like Trump Jr. and, and George Strait and um, all these professional athletes that I hang out with, all these other musicians, like because of my story and what I've been through, I've made friendships all over the world and it's, it's been something that is it's been so dear to me that i want to share all that with people i don't want it to be just another military book mm -hmm. yeah i i completely understand that there's so many things uh, i think about the story that's interesting like um and almost almost the reason why i thought about the movie thing almost like a movie i think this was your first and only tour right this was the first time you were going in there <laughs> yeah so i mean how long were you uh, this this was in Iraq, right? It was, yeah. Yeah. So how long were you there before this happened? Eleven months. Eleven months. Yeah. Yeah. And you basically, um, you you you, uh, you were in high school when nine eleven happened. I was. I was a sophomore in high school. Okay, and that's why you joined up. Yeah, that's primarily why. So I don't think a lot of people know, but I I wasn't born in the U.S. I was actually born in Mexico um, mm -hmm. and came to the United States when I was nine years old and uh, became a citizen two weeks before 9-11 happened. Wow. So ultimately, that, that's kind of what made me want to join. It's what, you know, uh, pushed me to join because when we were attacked um, as a brand new American, as in, you know, I, I feel proud of being American. I was given that gift uh, of saying that I was an American and I wanted to go fight because we as an Americans had been attacked and I wanted to take it to the bastards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Th this is this is the reason why. Like for me, I just think there's so many there's so many facets of this story, man, that just make it amazing. I think I can relate to you. Um, I was born outside of America, 
Uh, where where exactly were you born? In Mexico. Mexico. It's a small town called uh, Villahermosa, Tabasco. Okay, so you're completely Mexican? <clears throat> yeah. Mexican descent? Okay. People always say that we look alike. There's always people that are like, oh, you look like Crispy. Are you, you know, are you related to him? It's funny how a lot of people around the world, we, we uh, you know, we look like each other. I was born in Guyana, um, and I came to America when I was 11. You know, um, I'm obviously uh, a little older than you, but yeah, I think most of us can relate to that, regardless of where we came from, that on 9-11, we felt like under attack, you know, and, and even if you come from outside of America, you come here for a reason. And when people yep. attack that, you really, you feel it really deeply. Oh, for sure, 100%. You, you know, you, <clears throat> it's like I said, when I became a U.S. citizen, I, I, I felt attacked. I felt like this was, this was on me. You know, they attacked the American people, and I, I had just become an American, and I was so proud to be one that it really hit home that hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so just walk me through that whole process, if you don't mind. Like you, you nine eleven happened. What, were you you uh, junior, senior in high school? What was, sophomore. Sophomore. Okay. I was a sophomore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was a sophomore in high school. I was in a U.S. history class. I mean, everybody remembers when they were on 9-11. Yeah, uh, U.S. history class and, um, you know, just first period, man. And then, then it happened. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I remember. Um, and you were in Texas, there. right? You're, you're, you're like I was. Yeah, in yeah. Texas, okay. Yeah, I've been raised here, uh, you know, all my life, mm -hmm. um, most of my life. But, yeah, I've been, been raised here and I still live here. Um, but, you know, I was in class and it was just one of, like, Everybody in class was shocked. We were all crying, and and, mm -hmm. and right then and there, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And you know, as a sophomore, I put that on the back of my head and, and continue to live my life and continue to go to school and, and continue to play sports. Mm -hmm. and, and I was uh, a very good uh, football player. Had chances of going play collegiate football. Had offers, and um, you know, when it all came down to it, I uh, that that seed that had been planted that was in the back of my head actually came forward and said, "Hey." You remember how you felt that day? You remember that you wanted to do something about it? Well, here it is. And mm -hmm. and I told myself that right then and there. I said, you know, you're either going to go make this a career or you're going to go in for a few years and get, get some stuff done, contribute to society, and then go back to school. And that's kind of what, what the plan was. And so I ended up signing. I went to Forbidden mm -hmm. Georgia, became an infantryman, and um, ended up being stationed in Germany. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Can you paint a picture for, like, who was Omar Avila, <laughs> you know, before all of these things happened? I know you said you did football, so I'm guessing you were, like, big guy, you are into sports. Yeah. yeah, what was your thing, man? What, what, you know, how did you see the world turning out for you before all of this? Oh, man, I saw the world. I mean, I was a cocky kid, you know. I was I was an exceptional football player. People were, were coming and scouting me from all over the country. People wow. were taking pictures of me. I was in the newspaper, like, so I... I've been in that spotlight before all of this, and you know, I I believe my own hype. I know I was like, yeah, I'm going to the NFL. Like, I'm going to go play at some fat ass college, and then I'm going to go to the NFL, make a lot of money, and be that guy. So mm -hmm. that's what it was before, mm -hmm. because you know, because it's just kind of what I saw every single day, and that's just kind of how I felt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's a, it's amazing how uh, life can uh, turn around you know, turn around so fast on you. So, you know, after all, too. go ahead. Huh? I said, life turn around on to, to you really fast too. So you yeah. really don't um, take it for granted. Yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.